Good morning to the listeners of this vlog. This is a medical vlog by Dr. Judy Pimaco. I'm broadcasting from Sabuanga City, Philippines. And Sabuanga City is a city to the south of the Philippines. We're about 500 miles from the equator. Today's vlog is a simple thing about dementia and Alzheimer's. In America, Alzheimer's is a very big problem. Lots of the nursing homes and group homes are filled with patients with Alzheimer's. I used to see about 50, 20 a day. And at that time, 12 years ago, I really did not know much what to do with them. Nothing seemed to work even though they had Alzheimer's drugs that we gave. These Alzheimer's drugs didn't work, and yet the drug agents pushed it. There were Exelon and varieties of Exelon. Now after over 10 years of researching the natural nutrients that can help Alzheimer's. I wish I knew it then rather than just now. For dementia and Alzheimer's, the most important, most likely, is prevention. Because one of the articles that followed patients who were obese and not obese for 30 years. In the insurance registry in Los Angeles. And this was published in the British Medical Journal. The obese patients had about 75% more or 74% more chance of developing Alzheimer's compared to those who are not obese. So nutrition may play an important fact or factor in Alzheimer's. Don't get fat. Maybe simple things that can help prevent Alzheimer's is prevent the metabolic syndrome of diabetes. Diabetes affects maybe half of the population of America and maybe 30% of the population in the Philippines. So, treat the sugar problem before it gets worse and develop Alzheimer's and other complications of diabetes. Nutrition most likely will be the forefront of all of this. And divorce. One is green vegetables. Eat a lot of green vegetables. Two, eat a lot of fruits. Three, nuts but not coconuts. It's hard to eat coconut. In the, in the United States and other Western countries, they have walnuts, maybe almonds. Next, essential fatty acids. In Western countries, they have fish oil or maybe cod liver oil, which has omega-3 fatty acids. In poorer countries like the Philippines, Maybe eat sardines. Sardines will be a good source of essential fatty acids. Maybe not as much as you can get from salmon or cod, cod. But salmon has also less mercury. And Sabuana City is the sardines capital of the world, supposedly. So there must be a lot of sardines here. And next, are the B vitamins. Take multivitamins with B vitamins and minerals. B12 is essential in brain health. B6, B1, B2, B3, B4, B5, B6, B7, B8. There may not even be 9 or 10. But the B vitamins are very essential for brain health. Magnesium. Magnesium is another 
mineral, which is essential for brain health, and they can get it from green leafy vegetables. You don't have to get it from magnesium oxide, which is not absorbed very well. Other things that can help brain health is phosphatidyl serine or it's a phosphatidyl class of serine and others, but it's hard to get. Isha wants to get our tea, green tea, chocolate, although it's expensive, berries, nuts, but the cheapest way to improve brain health is intermittent, intermittent fasting. Reduce calorie intake to 25% of usual for the two, one or two days. And this provokes the regeneration of brain cells. Sleep. Sleep is very important. Too little sleep will damage the brain and too much sleep will damage the brain. So they claim maybe six or seven hours minimum to eight minimum. Some say up to nine hours of sleep a day, six to nine hours. Another thing which is very cheap in the Philippines and even in the world is turmeric. Turmeric is known to help brain health. In the Philippines, they have a lot of dishes with curry, and curry has turmeric, and we also have turmeric tea. They call it yellow tea or salabat, but it's also very possible that ginger and turmeric they have the same effects. If you cannot get turmeric, get ginger. This is a ginger plant. This is a rosemary. So, turmeric, ginger, may help. Now, a lesser known component is iodine. If you optimize the iodine intake, iodine is essential for the thyroid to function. And many in my practice in the past, 10 years ago, many of the Alzheimer's patients were hypothyroid. When we check their 3T3, 3T4, and their T4s may be normal, but the 3T3 is usually very low, and they seem to improve given combination of T3 and T4 replacement rather than just T4. I stopped using Synthroid very long ago and I started using Arbor Thyroid so that they could have the full range of T3, T4. So, maybe iodine will help prevent the hypothyroid, which is missed in many Alzheimer patients. Sometimes their metabolic problems are so prolonged that giving enough thyroid will not really improve their overall health in their 80s. So the best thing may be is to prevent Alzheimer's by making sure that the patient is nutritious but nutritionally optimized at an early age, maybe 30s and 40s, rather than wait till they are in their 70s or 80s. And this applies to nearly everybody. Prevention of illnesses is very important. And one of the most preventable illness is diabetes. Diabetes can be prevented in most people. Type 2. Type A can also be prevented by abstaining from dairy and maybe gluten. So, treatment of Alzheimer's should be prevention. But maybe when they have it, other things can help mitigate or even improve their brain malfunction, maybe including stem cells in the future. Thank you and bye, Abonjos.
Hasta la vista. Hasta luego.